so let's uh, let's just do one more video and talk about a couple other little things here. You know that for a sum of cubes, you can factor a sum of cubes, right? And also a difference of cubes. A cubed plus B cubed, it's A plus B times A squared minus AB plus B squared. These are just some formulas from algebra which you kind of need to know. And A minus B cubed is A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Okay? So notice that if there's a, whatever sign is here, that carries over. So plus, plus, pl minus, minus. Notice at the end here it's always plus. And this sign here is always opposite to whatever is here. So it's a minus there, plus there, plus there, minus there. So you need to somehow memorize those formulas or write them down. And I want to I wanted to bring those up because let's look at this question. The limit is x goes to um, 1 of the cube root of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, as always, we should develop this habit. Let's put in this number and see what we get on top and bottom. Cube root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the top is 0. And the bottom, 1 minus 1, 0 as well. So we know we're in type 2. And in type 2, if it's 0 over 0 like it is here, we should probably use some algebra to, uh, to make some progress on this. And notice that this here, we can't really factor that, can we? That's not really going to help. The strategy is, you know what, we're going to do this. We're going to multiply top and bottom by a good quantity, a smart, a smart quantity, to make everything work out for us. And do you know what it's going to be? We're going to take our inspiration from this formula here. It's like we're, it's like we're going to use the bottom formula here, okay? We're going to take our a here to be q root x. And we're going to take our b to be 1. We're kind of trying to make this match up with the top, okay? And this factor over here is what we're going to put over here. So a is cube root x and b is 1. So if a is cube root x and I square that, what is that going to be? Well, that's going to be the cube root of x squared plus cube root x times 1 is cube root x. Sorry, cube root of x squared plus... 1 squared is 1. So that's pretty pretty weird, huh? But that's that's what's going to lead to good things for us. And as long as I write it on the top and bottom, exactly the same thing, this quantity here in the big brackets, that's really just equal to 1. So I'm multiplying my original expression by 1, so it doesn't change anything, does it? And let's see what happens now. So do you know what I get when I multiply the tops here? I get this guy. So I get cube root of x cubed, which is x, minus 1 cubed, which is 1. So that, look at how that all collapses down. Now the bottom here, nothing really happens on the bottom. Um, I have to just recopy what I have. It's kind of a big mess, but it's not too bad. Whatever you do, don't, don't multiply that out, okay? Because you'll wreck, you'll wreck the next step, which is a canceling step. Notice I have x minus 1 on top and bottom now, and I can get rid of those, huh? So my result is just limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over this cube root of x squared plus cube root x plus 1. And now you know what? This is now a type 1 limit. At the beginning, it was type 2, 0 over 0, but now it's a type 1 because I can just put in 1 to get my answer. So I get 1 over, well, 1 squared is 1, cube root of 1 is 1, cube root of 1 is 1. So I get 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 3. So that's how you do that. So sometimes if you see a cube root there or something and it's 0 over 0, you might want to be using one of these formulas up here, okay? Okay, and maybe just to end this, we'll just remind ourselves... Um, of the step function. Do you remember the greatest integer function? It's like the, the greatest integer of x 
it's uh, let me just write it down quick usually these square brackets okay so we want the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 3.2 so this would be 3 okay even if it was like 3.99 the greatest integer that doesn't exceed this is still 3 right um, what about something like this minus 2.5 what do you think the answer is there so here's minus 2, minus 3, minus 1. Minus 2.5 is right there, right? This is the greatest integer which does not exceed that. It's like the first integer on the left of it, okay? So this is minus 3. But if I just had the int greatest integer of minus 2, it would be minus 2, okay? So I think you, you should be familiar with that function. And uh, let's remember to ourselves how the graph of that looks, okay? How does the graph of the greatest integer function look? Well, it's like a step function, right? It looks kind of like this. So here we're graphing the greatest integer of x. So the greatest integer of 0 is 0, and then it, you get to 1, and then it takes a jump, right? And then you're at 1, and it goes over until you get to 2, and then it takes another jump. And that's basically how it goes, right? And same thing over here. This is negative 1. So that goes on forever in both directions. Once we have that graph, it's kind of easy. I can ask you maybe a question like this. The limit as x goes to 2 from the left of the greatest integer of x. And I could also ask you the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of the greatest integer of x. Well, this is, uh, let's look at the graph here. Here I'm taking a number to the left of 2, so it's like this, and I follow that up. And you see that my y value is 1, so this answer is 1. But if I'm on the right-hand side of 2, and I follow that up, the answer is positive 2. And so if I ask you the two-sided limit at 2, what would you say? Well, this is undefined, right? Why is it undefined? Simply because the left and right limits are not the same value. If those limits turn out to be different, then the two-sided limit cannot exist. In other words, it's undefined. Good. So that's, uh, and maybe, what if I ask you something like this? Let's say I, I was at uh, maybe, instead of 2, what if we do it at uh, 2.5 or something? The limit as x goes to 2.5 of the greatest integer of x from the right and from the left. And the two-sided as well. What do you think the answers for those would be? Well, let me just erase this, get some room. Well, let's, let's take advantage of our graph. We, we have the graph before us, so it makes things a little easier. So here's uh, 2.5 would be maybe right here, okay? Notice no matter if I go from the left or from the right, my answer always turns out to be 2. So both of these are equal to 2. Does that make sense? And here, the since the, both of the left and right limits are the same, we get 2 as well. So on this one, the two-sided limit does exist. But it, that's the reason is is because the value that x is going to here is not a, an integer. It's a decimal. And whenever you do that, the, the, the two-sided limit will exist.